so I'm hiking up this mountain. I notice this pale green lichen. North is uh, is you know off that way. So the, this slope is kind of angled north uh, northeast ish. And so I'm going to hike across the other side of the mountain to see if there's the pale green lichen over on the other side and according to my theory there won't be so this green lichen can help you identify if you're on the north side of a mountain or whatever and, and just like the compass cactus can help you with your directions <laughs> This is bear grass, and I just took one piece, cut it off, scraped it down a little bit just to loosen it up, and then started twisting one direction, and then wrapped, as I was twisting, wrapped it around this stick to dry, and I'm hoping this will work as a twine, a really simple twine for like a, a bow drill or for tying together a wood frame if I was going to make a, a structure of some kind without having to go through the whole process of weaving it into a braided cord or something. So uh, just by twisting it one direction, I'm going to see if I can save myself some trouble and some time in the future. Appears to be a type of sumac. The berries are definitely sumac looking berries. The leaves are different from the kind of sumac I'm used to, but uh, the berries, these fuzzy little things are actually pretty good. They're different. They're uh, lemony. And definitely get your saliva flowing. about these older plants or, or maybe it's where it is that makes it tougher but there's a, almost like a bark that will peel away and then inside of that the stem is actually kind of sweet now we're on the south side of the mountain. Okay, so this is north. That's that's the ridge, that's the top of the mountain. On this south end of the mountain, there's no lichen. So that's consistent. Remember that and that can help you with directions when you're out hiking. The lichen will face north. On anything facing south, it's not going to grow. There's south. Okay. And uh, we're at the very crest of the mountain, so you can see, even looking up close, 
there's no lichens on this side, on the south side. So once again, look at the look at the compass. Here we go. Ish. Okay. So there's north. Okay. Now we come over the crest. You can see now on this side of the mountain we're starting to see a little bit of lichen right here at the very top. You can see this is a different type of lichen here. It's pale green, but it's not the same kind. And as we start to move down the slope just a little bit. You can see in the cracks of the rocks we're starting to see some. We're seeing more. See this? Okay, moving down. There's a bunch more. Yay. Okay, moving down the slope. Again, we're facing north. Look at all that green lichen there. Okay, so this is north. So there you have your compass lichen. You know, the compass lichen is a little less cut and dry. Here I am on the south slope, right? And I'm walking along and uh, Suddenly I'm seeing these lichens, right? And so it looks like, well, hey, I was wrong. Actually, look at what they're doing, though. I'm going to show you the compass. Okay. Watch, see where north is. And look at the rock. Okay. So again, where north is. Look at the rock. It's growing on the north side of the rock. It's a little deceptive. Here, this is growing on the north side of the rock, but not the south side. And sometimes you'll see a little bit of lichen on the south side of a rock. Every now and then. When you see this lichen, almost all of it is on the north slope. And even if you're on a, a different slope, almost all of it is facing north. Oh, okay, this is, this is perfect. See, these little globe mellow bushes haven't got their flowers yet. They just have the buds on there. The flowers are starting to come out. So this is the perfect time for these little stems. Remember those random grasses uh, that I threw into the pot in that zombie apocalypse hike? That is, it's actually this flower. It was those, these flowers before the flower came up. And the flower itself is pretty sweet. Okay, now, up this mountain, find the water. down all the ravines. There. See that? Cottonwoods. There. So you can see because it's a brighter green from this distance. You're deciduous trees like your cottonwoods and uh, what else uh, sycamore they're going to be a brighter green and you're going to see them from this distance and uh, if 
you were thirsty, you'd know which direction to go. So that's it. I mean, you want to find water, stand on top of a mountain if you want. <laughs> but basically, you're going to follow the washes. You know, you're going to you're going to get to the low spots. You're going to follow the washes. But from up here, I can see what washes I want to go to. Farther in the distance along the road. Now this camera isn't as good as the other. I ran out of battery. You can see along the roadway there a lot of cottonwood and uh, again you can see that it's a tree that requires a lot of water because it's a bright green all these desert scrubby things like mesquite and whatever will be a darker color so my plan of attack uh, to get water would be first to go there it's close and then if there's nothing on the surface it would go there because it's the second closest and then if that didn't work of course I can always follow that all the way down to where that dirt road is there's water there there's also a big cow pond off in the distance there I can see I just see the water there's nothing really growing there the benefit the cow pond of course uh, even though the water would be dirty is that if I had the equipment to boil it I could uh, I do have the iodine tablet uh, tablets and that sort of thing so I could go ahead and do that you know I could filter the water through a bandana I just fold it over several times and hopefully filtered you know most of the dirt or particulates out of it and then do the iodine tablets but uh, I'm gonna look for fresh water first there actually is food inside here it's just sliced right off of there Easy. First of all, this is very wet, full of juice, and uh, even raw, it's really good. Probably the farther down we get, I expect the less sweet it probably will be. But I'm telling you though, okay, just eating this like it is without even boiling it or cooking it. Very satisfying. But I could see dicing this up and putting it on a pan or putting it in water and boiling it. And uh, I'm take some pieces with me for later. was the first uh, the first little oasis I pointed to where I said there it's the one farthest on the right anyway what we have here is water coming out of the rocks and just sort of it's not even dribbling you know I mean it's wet it's coming out of the rocks and if it rained recently we'd have a pool on the top here but the cattle there's free range cattle here have been all through here and right a hundred yards that way there is a little pool on top but it's all mud the cattle have walked all through it it's just a little mud hole and I don't want that so a I was right right you look for 
the cottonwoods or the deciduous trees uh, from the top, you know, from the ridge, and you can see the brighter grain, you know that, that uh, there's water there. So in this case, it's just below the surface. You could dig down and get it, but I don't want it because it's dirty, <laughs> right? Um, so I'm going to move just north, right over this little hump here, and we'll try the next one. There is lots of uh, red clay in the soil here. It's, uh, you know, dirty clay, but, uh, but we've covered that. It can be cleaned up. It can be made into something useful. And uh, a lot of red right over there. There's some better clay in the bank. So if you decide to hang out here, then uh, there's probably everything you need. Lots of food. There is water, clay, so you can make uh, bowls and dishes and cups and whatever. And uh, so, nice spot. suspected this one is also while there's more water here it's another cow toilet uh, they just come down here to crap and pee and drink the water I'm not into that too much um, so while I know I could dig down right above where this water starts somewhere right I could, uh, I could probably dig a well I also know I could walk down this creek bed and eventually find real water that's a lot less polluted but I do know where I'm going and I know I'm going to head straight north to that road where there's a creek and well my car is there too <laughs> so but anyway yes you can see there is water based on what I said you can see that there's cottonwood trees down here from the ridge of the mountain. I just don't want to drink this water because this is cow potty water. So anyway. Well, it was a good eight hour hike. I don't know if I should feel like a pansy for feeling tired or if being tired is well deserved. All right. Well, it's been a full seven days since the hike where I took a blade of bare grass and basically scraped as much of the plant material away from the fibers as I could. Just twisted it one direction and wrapped it around this piece of wood. So I'm going to unwrap it and we'll see what we have. So seven days later, boom, there's a cord. I think that could be used. It's not unraveling itself, so that's really, seems to be really all you have to do. And uh, I don't know if you did that and then maybe tied up your, if you're trying, uh, tying a frame together or whatever, um, probably wouldn't even have to wait till it dries, just make sure it's tight. <laughs>